unexplored regions of the world. And now for the first time, scientists have mapped the Perth Canyon, a deep ocean gorge the size of the United States Grand Canyon. Researchers from the University of Western Australia spent two weeks charting the depths that stretch to four kilometres below the waves. And what they found is remarkable. For more, I'm joined by Professor Malcolm McCulloch from the University of Western Australia. Can you give us an idea about what this Perth Gorge looks like? Where exactly is it? So it's, um, the gorge is situ situated about 20 kilometres offshore uh, Rottnest Island, a well-known location. So it, it cuts, it's like an ancient river stream, it cuts its way from the continental shelf um, out into the abyssal depths. Um, and so, yeah, and it's quite a startling, it's quite a profound feature that we can see on the seafloor um, offshore Perth. So how did your research work? We're looking at some of these quite beautiful pictures. How did you capture that? Yeah, we, we were fortunate. We put a proposal into the Schmidt Ocean Institute, which is a private foundation, and they brought their ship, um, and they also uh, provided an ROV. That's a remote operating vehicle. And using the ship, we did this very fine-scale multi-beam mapping using sonar, which produced some of the beautiful maps you can see. And then um, I went to the, we decided to go to the, the places where the, the most interesting, the steepest walls and so on. Then we took this art we call an ROV and sent it down into the canyon. And um, you can see some of the pictures um, of these very steep walls and, um, and also some fantastic uh, biota there as well. Um, so, so the ROV is the first footage of this, this particular region that we've ever captured. And one of the remarkable aspects of this is the sheer depth. We're talking four kilometres in places, not a lot of life, light rather, but still plenty of life there. Yeah, we actually we didn't get down to the very greatest depth of four kilometres. Our ROV was limited to just two kilometres, but we know it goes deeper. But what we found as we went along the edges of the canyon walls, well, first off, I was surprised how steep they are. They're like vertical walls, and some places they're actually overhangs. Then attached to those walls, you can see uh, some corals and other sorts of biota that are fixed onto the walls and, and living living in these very difficult environments. The water's quite cold, there's no light. Um, so it's a fascinating environment. But actually, interestingly, I should say, although it's deep, it's not out of reach. This, this area is actually being affected by climate change as the waters from the surrounding shelf uh, actually flow down into the canyon. So, that, so the area is quite vulnerable to climate change, and that's one of the aspects we're looking at. So can you just tease that idea out from us? You're saying there is some heat coming into this very cold water. Are you attributing that to rising sea temperatures and global warming? Yeah, actually, there's two effects. One is possible warming because it is affected by the different ocean currents, but also uh, the waters on the shelf are being, um, uh, they're seeing more carbon dioxide from the uh, atmosphere emissions. And at the end of the summer when those waters cool and they get salty, they actually, the expression is they cascade down into the canyon, transporting these carbon dioxide rich waters into this area. And since it's already um, at the limit of carbonate, what's called carbonate saturation horizon, that's where carbonate minerals will dissolve or, or become unstable. And many of the corals are made of carbonate. So um, the, these then are now, the water is now becoming um, much less favourable to their um, continued existence. And briefly, it's not just the natural world under the spotlight. You also found a, a missing piece of equipment on the ocean floor. <laughs> Yeah, so there was a sea glider um, that had been missing for a number of years. We knew roughly where it was, but um, you see, probably see some imagery. It took two dives to find it, and um, we didn't actually end up rescuing it, but we, yeah, you can see there was actually corals growing. As you can see, a soft coral growing on it, and we were able to locate it, um, um, but we had to visually find it. It was very hard to find, actually, uh, so it points to the difficulty of finding um, objects even when you know their location quite quite well. And one of the extraordinary things about this research is that it is a great unknown natural wonder and yet relatively close to Rottnest Island. How significant is the technology used to make these discoveries and should there be more investment in this area? Yeah, look, the ship, um, although we, I mean, in Australia in the research context has a ship that can do, one ship that can do the mapping, but it's split between the East Coast and West Coast. But actually, surprisingly, we have no ROV cap capability to go down and, and take these fantastic uh, video images and actually sample the uh, ocean floor and these very interesting areas. 
So this capacity, much many other countries have this, but surprisingly, in our research, um, marine research ability or capabilities, we don't have this, and that's a major gap that we should uh, look to fill. Professor Malcolm McCulloch, congratulations on those extraordinary pictures, and thanks for joining us today. Welcome.